Welcome back to Bad Answers. Patron Robert Williams asked, how do we know that Fred Hoyle was wrong about the steady state model of the universe? Short answer, the CMB. Hello again, astronauts. Welcome to Bad Astra, a wacky science channel where we learn about physics with more costume changes than math. On Wednesdays, we release videos ranging from the Bad Answers series, where we answer viewer-submitted questions, to interviews with scientists about their research, to science-related music videos when we're feeling extra ambitious. Our main content comes once a month in the form of deep dives on scientific topics, from the life cycle of stars, to vaccines, to the history of the universe. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, and check out our Patreon for early access to videos and exclusive content. universe has been around since at least the 13th century, with Seeger of Brabant's The Eternity of the World, which was condemned by the Pope in 1277. In 1929, Edwin Hubble showed through his observations of faraway redshifted galaxies that the universe was expanding. Steady state theory is the theory of cosmology proposed in 1948 by British scientists Sir Herman Bondy, Thomas Gold, and Sir Fred Hoyle, and later developed further by Hoyle. This theory says that yes, the universe is always expanding, but it's maintaining a constant average density. This means matter must be continuously created to form new stars and galaxies at the same rate that old ones become unobservable as a consequence of their increasing distance and velocity of recession. This model of the universe has no beginning or end in time and no change in the matter density in space, hence the name steady state. Galaxies of all possible ages are evenly intermingled. There are no meaningful developments and the history of the universe is a moot point. There had been another theory proposed in 1931 by George Lemaitre, a Belgian physicist and Roman Catholic priest. This theory took the expansion of the universe, projected it back in time, saying that the further back in time you went, the smaller the universe was, until at some finite point in the past, all of the mass in the universe was concentrated into a single point, a primeval atom, where and when time and space came into existence. Hoyle thought this new idea was silly deriding it in a March 1949 radio broadcast saying, these theories were based on the hypothesis that all matter in the universe was created in one big bang at a particular time in the remote past. Thus, Hoyle inadvertently named the Big Bang Theory. Now, it's only science if you can test the theory with observations. In the 1950s and 60s, observations began to support the idea that the universe was changing. Bright radio sources like quasars and radio galaxies were detected at large distances and not close by, and therefore could have only existed in the distant past. Remember, the further out in space you're looking, the further back in time you're looking, because you're detecting photons that have reached Earth after being emitted from another point in space and traveling at a fixed rate, the speed of light. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope it does. Back to the steady state model. Whereas the steady state model predicted all objects would be evenly distributed throughout the universe, the Big Bang Theory predicted discrepancies like this appearance of radio sources. By 1961, the steady state model had been ruled out by most cosmologists. Aw, Cece, you're biting my hand. You're not supposed to do that, but it's cute. The nail in the steady state coffin was the discovery of the cosmic microwave background radiation in 1964. Cosmic microwave background radiation was predicted by the Big Bang Theory. 
The steady state model tried to explain away the microwave background radiation as light from ancient stars scattered by galactic dust. But the CMB's level is very even in all directions, unpolarized, and close to an ideal black body. So how could it be generated by numerous point sources, not be polarized at all by the scattering, and be the result of many sources at different temperatures as well as different redshifts? Uh, the cosmic microwave background is clearly a single radiation source, coming from all around us. This means we are looking back in time to the point just before last scattering, when the entire universe was just one big radiation source. This means that there was a point in time when the universe was just one big radiation source. Which means Fred Hoyle was wrong, and the Big Bang Theory, as he called it, is now the accepted theory of the origin of the universe. Say goodbye, Cece! Astra out! Astra out! Cece and Astra out! <laughs>